Now welcome to Windy Videos. This is a new set of videos. It's identified as V1. Tomorrow's video will be V2. The next day V3. The reason for that is we have three separate projects involving three separate restorations. A BMW, number one, and a Buell, and a custom, very custom Moto Guzzi Daytona. So all three of them are going to be, we're going to be working on them in no separate sequence. As weather permits, as time allows, it's going to be an enormous job. It'll probably run a few months. It may run into a many, many videos. I try to keep the videos reasonably short, reasonably interesting, but this is a lot of labor. To do three restorations at once is a giant, giant job. Now, if you follow our videos on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, and we do try to post something every day. Yesterday, Vlad brought over three separate projects for us to work on. We're going to start the first one today, the BMW one. All three are different. All three are going to require a lot of hours of sanding and prepping and whatever. We don't even have the design for the paint job finalized for the Moto Guzzi yet, but we're going to start the BMW today and it's going to be about prepping some carbon fiber parts. This you would think is going to be very easy. It's something anybody could just do and just go spray some clear on a carbon fiber. It's anything but that if you've ever tried to do it. I'll explain why in detail as we get into the video. Now pretty much every bike in my collection has some unique carbon fiber parts that I've even made the carbon fiber sheet from or made unique parts. This is one that's on the 650. Another one, the side covers, the unique side covers. All of those videos are out on the channel right now. And some of the carbon fiber parts I've made, relatively straightforward and easy, but putting a nice finish on them is always challenging. And there's several ways to do that. When I made these parts, I had one way of doing it because they're heat sensitive. These, a whole different way. And I'm gonna to try to explain when you're making these parts, custom unique parts. Now this is for Vlad's motorcycle. The parts are already made, but they don't have a real nice finish on them. The BMW parts need to have a high gloss finish imparted, something like this. And we're going to try to show how to do that on this video. Now, it's one thing, like these parts on the MT-09, those are carbon fiber parts I made, unique parts, the parts that go in here. But the problem is, when you're painting them, you run into one, side of, one set of problems. And when you want them to have the clear carbon look, a whole nother set of problems. Again, I'm going to try to explain it in detail. And even making simple parts, just like the license plate, the little uh, covers that go behind it, even small parts like that, it can be challenging to get the finish the way you want it. Now, we were hoping we'd have better weather, but we're starting off the day with uh, snow, and more snow is on the way. But we'll be able to get all the preparation done today. And while the yard is a winter wonderland, I doubt we're going to get anything painted today, but... We can get all the prep done and that'll be fine. So we have three new projects in the shop right now. One of them is the Buell and that's put away. That's the second priority thing, but what Vlad would like us to do is take care of this fender. There's three pieces of it. Let me explain carefully what we're trying to accomplish. Now, so you understand what we're trying to accomplish here. This is really <laughs> kind of simple. But yet a lot of people wouldn't understand. When these parts are made in a mold, they have several different ways they can make it. But one of the ways they make it is they take the female mold and put a release agent in it and then build the part in it and vacuum bag it, which looks like that's the way this part was made. But when they do that, there's always a chance. There's two things. There's always a chance there's some little amounts of the mold release agent, which can be any number of things from PVA to silicone. And the finish is only as good as the mold. No, no matter how you do this, the finish is never better than the mold. Now this looks like, and I'm going to try to do this with the macro lens up close. You can see how ripply this is, and it's a production motorcycle part from BMW. This is not an aftermarket part, but it's not a smooth finish. It's got imperfections in it. And of course, what Vlad would like to have is an absolutely flawless show quality finish. Now, I'm not really sure the macro lens can pick up how rough this surface is. And it's, it's shiny up to a point, but we're going to try to make it a whole lot better. And this is what we're striving for, is a, a finish that when you get to the stripes, you can't even feel where the stripes are. 
and absolutely smooth, smooth to the touch. This is kind of like, like they took the short way out. But again, this is a production motorcycle, but we're going to try to make that better. Now, this piece has a, a chunk missing here of the paint. We're going to try to get the matching paint, and actually we're going to wait. Vlad wants to get repaint this part right now. And also, while we're doing that, we'll sand. Now, this, car, this piece of carbon fiber looks a lot nicer. But again, you can see the flaws in it. There's chips. And it's normal wear and tear from riding a motorcycle. Because these are, these are bikes. I know all the bikes in Vlad's collection he rides. But this is going to take a little bit of extra time. But when we're done, I hope we're going to have something that adds to that bike being very special. Now, this is the, big, the biggest of the three pieces that we're going to do as a separate part. This has got chips. This is where the brake hose was rubbing on it. Some scratches here, whatever road grime. But the biggest one that this has to be fixed on, the front of it and the top, it looks like the forks have bottomed out right into that. And I think this is the one, I'm not sure. I think this is the one that Vlad had a little problem. He bent the front wheel in a, in a pothole and the forks bottomed out. That's how that chunk got in there. But we're going to try to fix that. But now it's not as easy. I'm going to show this on a close-up. It's not as easy as you think it is. Because where that goes down into the carbon fiber, we're only going to put clear on it. So we want the clear to be flat. But I don't want to have that you can actually see a defect in the carbon. And I see the problem with this already is, and it's a problem I'm sure Vlad knows about, that when they make carbon fiber, they make what I call aircraft quality. It's 100% no flaws. This carbon has a flaw. It has a thread that's missing in two different spots. So this might be seconds, or they just handled it. Rough handling when they made it. Doesn't say who made it. It's Maybe it's BMW. Yeah, it's BMW part. But this is, uh, well, <laughs> there's no, nothing you can do about it now except make it as good as we possibly can, and that's going to be our goal. Now, one of the basic things, and I put it on all my tutorial videos, is you never want to take a part, it doesn't matter, if you're going to repaint it, refinish it, buff it, whatever you're going to do to it. The first thing before I do anything is I want to clean it, and I want to get as much of the wax off. Simple green will work, then I'll degrease it with some degreasing agent like M600 or Prep Oil. But the reason you don't want to just grab sandpaper and start sanding is whatever's on the surface, you drive it down into the surface and you, you'll more than likely then have multiple fish eye issues among other things. But the first thing of any, any time I work on any part for any reason, I like to have it clean. And this of course, because it's a fender, there's probably some goop down in the bottom here. And if it's really heavy, I'll take it over to the sink. And in the worst of all worlds, in the absolute worst of all worlds, I'll steam clean it. Now you can see, I would be burying that somewhere in the paint. And this is even though this is the bottom. What happens, it gets on your fingers and you start touching everything. And, and I change my gloves regularly. Once they get greasy and dirty, that's another great tip. Don't just wait till uh, the end of the day to change them. And this is the case. This part, I'm sure, has been waxed. I'm sure it's been from from road grime and uh, cleaning the bike and whatever so but this the first step of everything is clean the part no matter what part it is case of the fender this was really dirty in the back here it's, it's residue from road grime and everything I didn't want to be touching that and getting it, getting it somewhere in the paint job this is just an extra step normally you don't have to do this I'd say half of the time when it's when it's this dirty, I would steam clean it. This is not that bad, though. Not too bad, but starting with clean parts, always. As long as we're in here, I'm going to mix up a couple of drops of dish soap. It doesn't, it's not critical how much it is. Warm water is better than cold water, just like when you do laundry. And this will be for our wet sanding. So I got little squares of 400 sandpaper. If if this wasn't so rough and so so much to fill in or sand off, what I have to do now is sand off all the mountaintops, and it's going to be time consuming. I need to sand it. I'll do one little spot in real time so you can see what this looks like. I always believe in doing something in real time. Oh, and I wanted to show this in real time. 
it's always my objective to show what that looks like and we'll do the whole part it'll be time consuming with the whole part flat like that and that's about all we're going to get done today is get these parts prepped because it's still snowing now, i put a lot of the redundant sanding in fast forward so the video wouldn't get boring well more boring than it already is and this work is kind of boring but anyway this is the kind of thing that when it's done right and you start with a good foundation a clean part and you're meticulous about sanding out everything and getting it dull you've got a, a nice solid foundation for your project now at the end of the sanding I wanted to show this is this is really a good good little tip if you notice when you sand this way and you almost never get down into the, the bottom of the valleys and that's where the paint needs to bond the best so what I do I have a piece of well it's a, just a piece of spare sandpaper and I'm going to try to show this wrapped around a an old nail file and it's going to allow me to get in there and get that last little bit so that when we're all done with this we should have nothing there should be nothing like this is shiny this whole part should be dull then and smooth then we know at that point we're pretty much ready for putting the clear on and the way I do this I go back and forth first do this the rough sanding I dry the part off and then look for any little shiny spots because any spot that's still shiny to paint is not going to bond real good there and you want the valleys anywhere there's a valley boy oh boy if if it starts pulling up there it'll make a bubble and then it'll pull up and a chunk will come off and when you're doing this kind of show quality finishing the whole idea of this is this is going to last way longer than a normal paint job that came out of a body shop you've got more paint on in the very end you are able to buff it out many more times so the whole idea is when you build a solid foundation for that to go back and have to do any extra buffing or any touch-ups or anything you've got the foundation solid it just pays it's just a good investment once that part is totally flat and you can see we're we're pretty close to having it now to wipe that down with some degreasing agent that part is ready for the first coat of clear the next part that we're going to do we're pretty much going to do the same thing as we did to this part we can put that aside for now we're going to thoroughly clean it degrease it make sure there's nothing on the back here and boy there was a lot of stuff on that the i guess tire residue this looks like actually the tire was rubbing on this or something oh maybe from the crash from the uh the bent rim but anyway we're just going to take 400 sandpaper sand this all smooth get this prepped up there are three or four little places in here that are nicked or dinged we'll be very careful and very careful we're going to repaint the white so you want to get everything scratched etched smooth and especially radius and all the edges and this is this is a part of obviously you see right away when you look at the motorcycle the focal part now I've been painting things my whole life mostly model airplanes some guitars boat parts motorcycles dirt bikes whatever but the biggest thing I always learn and it's the hardest thing to convince people of is right in the beginning of the job that part has to be clean and it, when you paint over anything greasy or oily you you put a little time bomber a landmine in the project now I know a bike like this when it's all put together and all shined up and you go on a group ride with your friends you want it to be perfect and the way you make it perfect is you got to start at the very beginning like on a day like today that part you, anything that's a flaw in there even a manufacturing flaw BMW had some little defects in there and anything that's a little chip or nick in the paint from the road grimer riding the bike and now this is the biggest part and this is going to be more work than than the other two of course but I st again, I have this defective piece in the carbon. Oh, you're still going to see it. Not much you can do about it. And I want to get the first thing, get this cleaned. Nothing different than the two smaller parts. It's just a lot more work. And hopefully what's going to happen today, if the day plays out well, we're going to get the parts all prepped up and we'll be ready for a, actually ready for a day that we can paint. We can't paint now with the snow. But here's what the problem is. In the past, when we've done restorations on one motorcycle, I've labeled them, uh, you know, 
volume one, volume two, three. So w when people five years later, and people that, that are normally watching a channel every day when I post something, they would follow along in sequence. Well, what happens is if you're coming new to the channel and uh, you're looking at the videos that I made a year or two or three or ten years ago, actually, you don't get to make all the videos I did and do it in one year, that's for sure. But, but what I'm getting at is now I'm going to take each video. This will be number one, and at the end of the title of what's on the video, I'm just going to put V1, V2, standing for Vlad, of course, because we're doing three separate projects at the same time. And I wanted people years from now, if they stumble upon this video and they want to see part two, part three, they could watch them in sequence. So we're going to try that at the end of the video, see how it works. Now that's quite a deep gouge. I'm concerned with that. I'm going to try, once I sand the part out, I'm going to try to block sand that in, but I don't want to go through into the raw carbon. Now, I always approach the sanding and the cleaning, all the basic stuff. Time is not of the essence because anything I leave to chance right now, there's going to be many, many hours go into this project and all three of the projects. And I don't want to start building a house with a flimsy foundation or something that's going to come back to bite me somewhere down the road. And where I spent an awful lot of time with a little sanding block was where that chip from the forks bottoming out. I think that's what caused it, or the suspension bottoming out. And, and again, that's, that was a really, really deep gouge. I'm hoping it in the final, the final product when it's all buffed out. You're not even going to know where that is. And it's a shame when you get something like that in a part like this, and you can't make the repair absolutely perfect. But it is... This All of this work is dirty work, and it's laborious, and it is always time-consuming. Well, day one, or as we know it now, is a coded V1 for Vlad. We got the beginning of what's going to be three different projects. This is the first, the first day of labor on this, and wearing out some sandpaper and cleaning the parts. But these three parts now are prepped and ready for the next painting day that we can get clear on it. Now... If a, a job this involved, I'm going to be flipping back and forth from other parts of the job, doing prep work, getting parts that we don't have to paint for the motor guzzy job yet. We don't have some of the other things we need. Uh, I was able to, I think, salvage that dent in the fender. I hope we won't know till we actually get plenty of clear on this. And then the Buell, the Buell project, that's going to be an animal unto itself. I still haven't really figured out exactly how I want to tackle that. This was a big thing. This was a whole day of sanding and cleaning up edges and cleaning parts. But I think we're ready now for the next day that we're going to have available. And, and time here varies. With, you never could put, plan two days the same. And I like never having Groundhog Day, by the way. But this was a great start to a, a triple project. And I think from this point on, we're going to make some real progress. So this will be V1. Follow years from now if you're watching this in a 2028 or something just just dial in on my channel search v2 v3 v and I'll, as long as this goes i'm a guessing this is going to be uh, more than a month of work working four hours a day we will see we'll see how it plays out anyway it's a this is going to be a really nice job and this is a really special motorcycle i know vlad appreciates it so when the day was over and I finally got to clean up the shop and dump all the water and empty the garbage and everything, I take I always like to take a look around and say, boy, this was a day well spent. It's And when you spend a day in my shop, yeah, it's dirty work. Yeah, it's hard work. In fact, I keep going over that. But at the end, boy, is there a reward when you could wheel that bike out into the bright sunlight and those parts are shining and glistening and gleaming. And by the way, this is the bike. These are the parts we're working on right here. That's the tail piece and the the front fender. And I think the other piece is up under the seat. I'm not sure where that piece goes. Anyway, there are more carbon fiber parts on this. And I think he's got some things on a tank have to be painted. But the next step, before we can do anything else, we got to wait for the white paint. And that's going to be an exact match to this motorcycle, which is only one of 200, and he's got one of 200 in the country, so I'm sure he's very fussy now, and in all the years I've known Vlad, he's as fussy as I am. 
He's patient and he's willing to pay the price for things he wants. And that's the kind of work that I've done on all my restorations. And the proof is in the pudding. It's been so many years, I just go out to the garage and I look around and I say, wow, that was, that was a life well spent, time well spent. I always think when you mow the grass, eh, the grass grows back. Eh, you go to the barber, you get a haircut, eh, and your hair grows back. You wash the car. But when you restore a motorcycle, you've got it forever. And forever is a variable thing, but you have it. That's what my point. And I've enjoyed owning these bikes for many, many years. Thanks so much for watching.